I'm Mike Mizrahi. I'd like to do a reading for you from my new historical fiction novel called The Great Chattanooga Bicycle Race, due to be released this May. She imagined the inscription on her tombstone. Here lies Anna Gaines, age 19. She died while riding a bicycle. Her hands gripped the handlebars so tight that her knuckles turned white and began to tingle. The initial excitement at mastering the nation's new favorite pastime gave way to a deep anxiety. An unrelenting panic threw her back in time when instead of handlebars, her fists gripped the reins of her beloved Appaloosa, Longstreet. She couldn't stop the memory of the terror that surged just before he bucked her to the ground. Five years of training, gone in an instant, and a whole life of dreams. The tumble had reset the trajectory of her life. Nothing would be the same. Outgoing by nature, she turned inward. Months in bed caused her to miss out on the fun of her youth. Later, the thought of men being interested in her seemed unimaginable. The obvious disability didn't help. Beads of sweat coalesced and found pathways to trickle down her cheeks despite mild temperatures that created the perfect day for a ride in the city. Wiping the droplets on the back of her hand, she pictured her life back in Chattanooga, captive behind black walls. With an ache in her chest, she thought of her overprotective mama. Ever since the accident, mama hovered like a fearful nurse. And then there was the town she lived in with all its rules, scrutiny, and expectations. To make matters worse, some of her prison time was self-imposed. A lack of confidence had long held her back from expanding her borders. She inhaled and slowly released. Could she break away by cycling with this slew of bloomer-clad ladies? She glanced around at the determined riders, many of them women, ready for this challenge. Then she realized that she wasn't like them. She couldn't do this. At least not now. Maybe never. What if she crashed into another unsuspecting cyclist and both of them fell headlong onto the hard, crushed limestone surface of the new Coney Island cycle path? Death might be an overreaction, but the possibility of a collision existed nonetheless, and the prospect frightened her. Auntie Harriet, her voice trembled with the rest of her body, causing her words to crack. I, I, I can't do this. I'm not a practiced enough cyclist after one week. Harriet cast an all too familiar glance. You overcame a terrible injury, so you can tackle this challenge. Either shrink away or overcome. The riders ahead of her climbed aboard their wheels. The moment of truth arrived, her heart thumped the familiar odd tingling from her head to toe told her that danger lay ahead and she experienced an overwhelming instinct to flee. Escape no longer an option, Anna began to pedal, her balance wobbly for a few seconds. She fought through her discomfort until the recent lessons kicked in and then shot out like a bullet from a gun. 10 yards turned into 50 and 100. By some miracle, she sat upright, the uncertainty about launching moments ago fading like a distant memory. The wheels rotated faster, advancing her speed. The thrill set her senses ablaze. The marching band grew faint in the distance, the rhythmical umpas from the tubas being the last brass sound hanging on to the wind. She leaned into the bars, invigorated by a mild breeze. A newfound freedom washed over her, mobility unleashed by the pedals and chain that turned the back wheel with every revolution of her legs. As she breathed in the bouquet of late spring, tinged with the grit of New York's city streets in summer, she burst into peals of laughter. The riders on both sides caught her giddiness, smiling as she passed through. The shady trees lining the lane almost hypnotized her. She gazed over at the pleasure carriages, horse-drawn wagons, and electric cars that filled the adjacent street. 
Citizens walked on sidewalks to their destinations. As she experienced big city life from a bicycle saddle, she concluded the wheel had rightfully taken its place among these varied forms of transportation. The cyclists rode on, Anna imagining her wheel lifting off the ground, climbing up into a blue sky, the backdrop for some silky clouds, thin and wispy. Rays of sunlight warmed her face. She pictured the aerial view of thousands of cyclists stretching for miles down the new cycling path below. Coney Island waited beyond. Birds of varying species, sizes, and colors winged their way home for the summer, sharing her airspace unperturbed by her presence. Something outside of herself warned of danger, causing the dreamy vision to blow away like smoke, much to her disappointment. A flash beside Anna made her jerk the handlebar to the left, narrowly averting a collision with a racer on wheels. She shifted the bar back to the right to compensate and stabilize, avoiding a nasty tumble into Aunt Harriet's bicycle. Her aunt didn't flinch. Perfect recovery. She cried out. Oh, Aunt Harriet, I'm in love.